cold winter weather in Melbourne. I love this season. I really don't understand people who love summer. Ah, this is the best. Gentlemen, I'm changing the title of this series from Mailbag to Comments, just because it's clearer as to what this series is. So let's get this show on the road. I received a lot of really enlightening comments under one of my more recent videos called Permission and Men Begging for Scraps, link below, that I wanted to showcase here. That previous video was about me relaying the story of my work colleague who wanted to work on his motorcycle one weekend, but felt the need to send his girlfriend fucking photos of the bike he was working on as proof that he wasn't, as he put it, fucking around and that she could trust that he was a good and decent guy. He really liked her, and he didn't want to ruin anything in her eyes, I get it, but the submission and validation in his demeanor really struck me. Now, that's why I shared it, um, and it seemed to have struck you guys too, and here are some of the comments. Uh, the first one from Flash Trans slash Desu Chen 55. Um, I'll read it in its entirety because it's quite a good response. He says, The importance of giving yourself permission and setting boundaries can't be stressed enough. Too many guys are thinking that freedom is simply abandoning things. Like women. For some guys, living a solitary life may be the answer, but for many, they're just parroting meaningless mantras. Like, women are bad for you, women take up all your time, if you abandon women, you'll be free, but that's no answer at all. If it's not women, it'll be something else. I agree. Women, maybe porn addiction, video games 24-7, overeating, meandering about the internet, searching for any kind of fulfillment to fill up that hole because you're looking for external validation. You've got to set your boundaries yourself and go from there. Don't abandon the things you love, but don't let them control you either. Mind you, I can only say all this because I'm still struggling myself. This shit is not easy in practice at all. See, these are the kind of guys I appreciate comments from. Reflective, not dogmatic, not binary. Really trying to sort of understand life in relation to them and sit back as the observer and to see what's the best course of action, what's fair, what's cooperative, etc. This is exactly the kind of thinking from Flash Trance. Um, if I were to belong to a group or tribe, it would, be, it would be these kind of stoic and civilized masculine minds. So, well said. Um, the most hated idiot on the internet said, when you're in a relationship, there is no such thing as a weekend or holiday. It's a job where you are on call 24-7 without pay. And what's worse is that you're the one paying her to be your boss. This is generally the perception today. Um, but I would depart in saying, you know, it doesn't need to be a 24-7 job. But I'm just trying to remind men that there are more kinds of jobs than just the 24-7 job. There are your pastimes, there are adventures, there's, you know, focusing on yourself at least a little bit, if not more. It's not just a seven-day-a-week job where you're on call, where you hate your boss and you hate your pay and the remuneration is shit and your life feels like a pointless routine. If you think that it's just a binary thing like relationships are all or nothing, then you're going to be really stressed if you have no say in how that construct actually works. I mean, you're part of the equation. Don't forget that. You have a say in how you want any relationship in your life to go whether it be work, um, friends. Um, I mean, why can't you have a say in how you spend your time? It's pretty simple when you look at it from that standpoint. I mean, just because women want it all in relationships doesn't mean to say you can't set your boundaries. I mean, without being too blunt, fuck what they want. You're part of the equation too. And if they don't like it, there's the door. I mean, why do they set the terms? Okay, biology, a lot of you guys, I respect that. I understand. But if you want some self-respect, don't complain that there's nothing you can do. You have to act this way if you want to be with a woman. I mean, do you? Really? And if she won't accept it and leaves, and that's really the underlying fear you have, well, I'd say you need to look in the mirror. And I'm not saying man up for her. I'm saying stand up for what you believe in. I think that's at the heart of it, is guys' frustration at 
feeling like a pet. Kung Fu Joe says, a relationship is just another job that actually costs you money. Not just money, but mostly and importantly, time. Um, Yang Ling, ah, my smooth talking supermodel friend. Um, he relays a story that illustrates itself. He says, the typical husband and wife grocery shopping excursion is the wife throws all manner of expensive brand name items into the cart, regardless of price or availability of equal, less expensive generic options. The man, however, chooses a small item like a candy bar and attempts to put it in the cart and the wife orders him to put it back. At the checkout line, he pays while she plays on her smartphone. Afterward, he takes her out for an expensive lunch. They hit the department store and the cycle continues. I think that says it all in terms of what to avoid. Um, Raz644 says, Currently, society considers a man's personal hobbies or interests to not be an important priority in their life. Not sacrificing that time is considered not being man enough. Society says if a dude is not on top of 100% of his shit at all times, then he's a child, so guys feel guilt whenever they pursue their hobbies because it's looked down upon. The only way for a man to not feel guilty and to have self-respect is to not care what society says, but not everyone is cut out to be this lone wolf. And Chris P responded to Raz644 by saying, Pressure from her to produce more because pressure from the state is stealing more at an ever-increasing pace. Men who do not figure out how to say no to at least one of them are doomed to servitude, misery, and a potential suicide. That's pretty important. She's serving the state. You're serving her in that train of thought. You're the last one in line. So have a think about that. If you don't say at least no to one of those and yes to yourself, more importantly, you're going to be living in the life of misery. Well said. Chris P said, and this is, this is directly in relation to my friend that I was talking about that was sending photos of him working on his motorcycle to his girlfriend to prove that he was doing something useful to her and not just screwing around. Chris says, part of the disease is that he also feels the need to be apologetic to you, that is me. Male identity has been so erased that men now feel the need to choose isolation or an oscillation between masculine and, f and feminine acceptability that is dependent on the audience that they're speaking to. This is really important and a great observation by Chris. The self is almost non-existent. This compliant man is almost an absolute out there, isn't he? Male self-interest is almost an extinct species. I think this is where much of the anger in men comes from, the knowing that we should stand up for ourselves, but we don't. Michael C. said, The immediacy of modern communication is also making people paranoid that if they haven't messaged or received a message from that person in question, he or she has fallen off the edge of the world. Yet this fear of being disconnected and alone um, and the only reality being online and when it's switched off or when you're away from it, it's almost like you don't exist. Joachim D says, women come and go. My hobby always stays. My former girlfriends hated my hobby. <laughs> Been there many times. It was nearly like dating another girl for them and most of my attention is going to my hobby. Yeah. It's like when women typically say, you like your fill in the blank more than me. It really reveals how much she needs herself to be the goddess, to matter above everything. It's not a good character trait for me, whether it's men or women. Biologically, yes, for the female, but you know what I mean. In 2019, come on, step up your civilized game. TMAC5 says, that's the toughest part about getting older, watching younger men make the same mistakes you did and being powerless to change it. It's probably why I'm so passionate about what I talk about, because I often feel like I'm talking to the idiot me who made past mistakes and a potential idiot me in my younger years that I could sort of help avoid making those same mistakes. Very true. It's the same instinct the father tries to talk to with his son that healthy mentorship of men advising and talking to younger men and passing on wisdom. The difference between men and women tends to be that men tend to admit wrongdoing to each other like this, being, I'd hope, a lot more open, even if it's in the privacy of one-to-one. -one. 
um, eating humble pie and admitting, look, son, dad fucked up, be better, don't do this. Whereas women's lack of guilt and never really having the ability to say I was wrong will just keep advising younger females with a more opportunistic perspective that's never sorry or never reflects. It's a victim perspective and a lack of personal responsibility where it's always men's fault, society's fault, um, everything else's fault outside of you. Mountain MGTOW says the crux of it is we don't have to justify our lives to impress women. His example here in relation to a platonic friend of his in the past where she would gaslight me and say things like, Am I taking you away from your busy days of doing nothing and playing video games? I was so surprised at her vitriolic entitlement to my time and I was just incredibly blunt with her. I tell her my time is my time to do whatever I want and it, if that includes you, you should be thankful. Yeah, to anyone. These women really feel entitled to our time and it irks me incessantly. It irks me too, Mountain. Um, the entitlement of them is beyond being merely unappreciative. Um, it insults any self-respecting man's intelligence by casting you as some naughty boy who should apologize to mummy. That really shits me. Call me crazy, but I can't train my women like a dog, like many men suggest. I'm not into bestiality, and I'm not into incest either. I can't date mummy, where I'm a submissive boy. So unfortunately, my relationships tend to have a short lifespan because I I require a female to grow up. I'm one of those idiots that um, expect reciprocal treatment, understanding, you know, the golden rule, treat people as you would like to be treated. Yeah, I know what you guys are saying. Yeah, good luck with that, human. And I agree. I see what you're saying. But considering that unicorn hunting isn't a priority for me, it really doesn't bother me and doesn't bother me when a particular woman turns out to be the normal woman. No big deal. She leaves. I win more time for myself. It's a win-win. Um, relationships to me are, are kind of on par with the analogy of, you know, working a really easy job that you enjoy, even part-time, or not working at all when it's not enjoyable anymore. Anyway, to me, it's pretty easy with regard to women. You take them or you leave them, but on your terms, your terms matter. Dutch Cobbler says, as a man diminishes his self-respect, so he diminishes her respect for him. And if a man needs to work that hard to not fuck up, it's really fucked. It's already fucked. Yeah. Richard R. says, seems to reflect the level of fear and or de desperation. Women sense this and prey on it all the more most of the time. He knows the cost emotionally, sexually, and maybe materially of a breakup and to start from scratch again in a market that's even more ruthless every day. True. It's like, again, working your way up in a company and it's getting worse and worse, but you don't want to quit and throw away all the investment of the years and what you've worked for to go up in this, in this particular company and start again out there at another company. It's the sunk cost fallacy, but I would contend you need to see what you value more. He continues, does she answer for every minute and action to him? I'm sure not. Not to ridicule him, but the times are sad for so many like him. I agree. I think it's the norm these days, unfortunately. The more guys I speak to, the quote unquote, I have to check with the boss guy seems to be the standard. It's not simply I have to tell her what's going on simply because you're in a close relationship and you want to let her know what block of time is coming up that might be yours so that she doesn't mistakenly make, you know, couple plans for both of you. And you don't want her to worry. Maybe, you know, she hasn't heard from you where, where she normally would have and she's wondering and worried where you are. But it's this actual mother may I posture of the child to parent, um, that view that I find really distasteful. Not for me, but for the guy living in it. MLR says, and his response is great in its entirety. So I'll just read it here. I think that when men are in a relationship, they function in an environment of fear. Fear of looking bad, fear of doing her wrong, fear of losing her. And when they fail, they turn inward and take responsibility for their faults while allowing the woman to take no responsibility for hers. 
A woman cannot fix a man because she cannot fix herself. So stop looking for women to fix you. Fix yourself as a man first. When you do that, the women will come. Who cares? If they don't, at least you have accomplished your overall goal of fixing yourself. Yes. In the end, that is all that should matter to you as a man. Exactly. It's not about her. And the notion of men functioning in fear is quite astute. A fear of losing her, your job, her, your job, her, and other people's respect, of holding on to all that compounding stuff. It's all connected and never ends. And that's the stress and anxiety for a man today. And none of it is having you as the priority in any of that sequence, other than just being a good compliant workhorse that gets a pat on the head. Jay John says, the dude sounds like one of those men who, quote, are the boss when she's not around types. <laughs> yeah, I've met a lot of them, especially, isn't it funny? You meet a lot of those, they act like the boss and they act all tough when the girl's not around. I tend to see a lot of them in very corporate environments, in suit and tie environments. Audemus 11 says, if she can't understand your passion and interest, then you need to ask yourself, why is she here? Precisely. What does she like about you? Does she even see what makes you tick? I mean, the essential values that a virtuous person should care about. Yes, I know, gentlemen. I know I'm talking about women here, but you get my point. Anonymous, in relation to the friend I was speaking about, said, he spent a weekend not enjoying his life. His fault, not hers. He should take responsibility for his life and his happiness. If she doesn't care for him, let her go. Exactly. Prince Revolver says, Stress will either make or break you. Most guys will put their own happiness and mental well-being on the back burner, working at stressful jobs, trying to maintain bills and relationships, which leads to making irrational decisions and being content with scraps. Yes, unfortunately. A man going his own way says, it's easy for us guys to be critical of this man because of the love goggles he has for her. But to be honest, she's making him jump through hoops using plausible deniability and emotional manipulation. I do hope he takes a step back and he does a survey of what his life is going to be with her. Exactly. It's all too easy to crucify men like the man I'm talking about at work to make ourselves feel better. But um, this sort of thinking will help you a lot more than being angry at men. Um, because if you're showing a sympathy from a father's point of view, think about how kind of more calm and confident you'll be able to approach life where you've got that stoic elder mindset where you're not angry at anything beneath you, but you're beyond it and above it and can offer advice. Um, well said, man going his own way. A, you said, instead of your work friend as his girlfriend, substitute employer or girlfriend. He marries her and he'll be permanently employed and having to account for his actions eternally. Until that is, she fires him for not giving 100% in her eyes to the company. He can't win this. Get Zen with the motorbike dude. There will always be employers looking for hire. Yes. At the end of the day, you'll get more out of your motorbike than working for a shit company where you feel depleted and you hate your life. Um, that's all for today. The, over, the overriding point I keep getting while reading these types of comments was, it's your life, gentlemen, and you should be proud of it and not confirming through a woman whether it's okay to be who you are and love wanting to do what you want to do, especially if it has nothing to do with her say-so. Think about it in this way if it helps some of you guys. Since she's never going to take responsibility, why would you even ask her for permission in the end, gentlemen? Think about that. You might as well ask your three-year-old daughter that you love if it's okay for daddy to do what he's doing. It's pointless. It's not about it's not about whether you love her or not if you're with a woman. It's about who gives a fuck what she thinks because it's got nothing to do with her and she hasn't got the skills to do anything with it anyway. Look, you don't treat your friends like your mother. Heck, as an adult, you don't even ask your own mother for permission. So why dance around pumpkin or any female for that matter? Be a decent person, but stop asking for permission to live your life and be autonomous, gentlemen. I hope some of that helped. So like, donate, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all the rest of that good stuff. Links below. I'll talk to you later, gentlemen. Bye.